What's happening inside the so-called re-education camps in Xinjiang? Was that a campaign of religious repression or an unprecedented effort of de-radicalization? I don't have all the answers, but I want to find out. And we traveled across Xinjiang to track down some of the attendees in the program. <laughs> we met 33-year-old artist Abu Zikari Albuli, who perfected his painting skills in the re-education center and now works in the gallery. We caught up with 30-year-old Urugu Yusam, who works in hospitality. We found 26-year-old Rukia Yakub, who improved her Mandarin and now works as a real estate agent. And we met 23-year-old Hala Noor, who became a cashier at a restaurant. A top Xinjiang official told us that by now all people have left the education facility. Now, looking back, one might think that much of the world has been against China's re-education centers in Xinjiang, right? Wrong. Yes, 22 Western countries and Japan wrote a letter to the UN criticizing China's Xinjiang camps, but 54 countries, most of them Muslim-majority states, defended China's counter-extremism efforts in Xinjiang, commending China in its development policies there and in, quote-unquote, promoting care to its Muslim citizens. And they probably have a point. China has built at least 35,000 mosques, more than France's 2,300, America's 2,106, and Great Britain's 1,600. Even on a per capita basis, Chinese Muslims still have more than triple the amount of mosques their Western peers have. That said, there are real concerns too. Many reports said that the mosques here have been demolished uh, on a large scale. Is that true? Xinjiang has a lot of mosques. The mosque is a long time ago. The mosque is a long time ago. The mosque is a long time ago. It's all about perspectives, and many people still have the impression that in China, Islamophobia is real and terrorism is not. I get it. I worked as a reporter in the U.S. for the past eight years, and I fully appreciate the power of the Western narrative that highlighted so-called ethnic repression and downplayed terrorism in China. Problem is... There is a double standard. For example, each time I question U.S. officials about terrorist attacks in China, they usually came short of calling them terrorism until I pressed them hard after the 2014 Kuiming train station attack. How does the United States characterize those attacks? We've been very clear in condemning all forms of terrorism, and we've condemned these attacks. Are they terrorist attacks? Yes, we've called them terrorist attacks. Yet Western media did not follow suit. Among the top 30 reports on Francis Charlie Abdul attack in 2015, 25 used the term terror attack, whereas in the Kunming attack, only two used it. And in the rare event the phrase terror attack was used, it was put in quotation marks. But hey, China is not alone. Harvard scholar Sean Darling Hammond's research showed that in November 2015, three attacks took place in Paris, Beirut, and Baghdad around the same time. There were 392 articles about the attack in Baghdad, 1,292 about the one in Beirut, and 21,000 on the Paris attack. Around the globe that year, for each Western life lost to terrorism, there were 665 Western reports, and for each non-Western life, only 60. So next time anyone tells you that China doesn't have a terrorism problem and only an Islamophobia issue, you'd better ask him where he got his data.